I am Professor Vinster. Welcome to Terplastic World. Now, I cut this fin off for a reason in the print on the slice. The reason of that, because it's a round area where you're putting, you're, at, you're actually um, lining up scales. So this actually makes it so that I can put it right there and line it up a little quicker to make my job a little bit easier. Like that. Well, it'll be like a little better than that once I glue it. That's the idea. That's why I did it like that. And then all the pieces are actually sanded up. And <clears throat> the other thing is too is all the teeth are gonna be have to go over just like you were a dentist, cleaning them all up, taking all the because I had to use supports on the teeth a bit. Not too bad. But you have to do all the teeth, which they actually don't look too bad. But uh, what we're going to do next is uh, actually glue it all together and make it look like a fish. Actually, uh, alligator gar. So the first glue job is going to be here. I'm going to put my accuracy glasses down on the column. Because without them, I have no accuracy. And we're going to check to see if that actually sealed up again. And we're going to give that a bit of a... I'm going to close my keyboard here because I don't want to get the stuff all over the place. There we go. That should do the job. Let's find out. Calling me a liar. All right. I'm going to glue this together and make it look like a fish. Generous around the edges. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see that's what I do. Just try to make it as close as I can. Okay, I'm going to scribble through the center. When this stuff bonds, it bonds. And like I said, the reason I put that there is because that way I can put that there and get start point and glue my fingers to it again. I have a habit of doing that. Yep. Get it on my fingers and then I glue my fingers. And this stuff sets up quick. So you see, I'd be struggling to get my fingers off, you know why? That's the first part about it is when you try to pull your fingers out, that's when you make a mess. That's when you get off accuracy. All right. Some kicker on there. We'll seal it up. All right. So there we go. There's the first part. It's on there. It's on there. Now. I could put this on next, but then because this is narrow, it doesn't give me a good base. But if I put it down here and decide to put the tail on first, more than likely the tail will be this way. So I'll put the tail on first. And we'll be pretty, pretty, well, it should be. I say it should be pretty easy to do. Then we'll find out, won't we? Put our glue on. Like I said, around the edge first. I already got some glue on my finger. Standard. And we will line up. There's actually a line going down the side of the fish. So it actually gives me a place to. And then we'll, that's usually what I do because they're usually top heavy when once you put them on. 
and you got to hold on to it. You want to get it as accurate as you can. So that's pretty good on this side. Hopefully it's okay on the other side. Put some kicker on it. Turn it around. And put it like that. Put it on this side. Now there's a bit, there's a bit of a, a a hump there, and that's because of expansion and stuff like that. So, and it's perfectly there, but we'll go over it wherever that uh, beveled file is. We'll actually go over it. See, doesn't take much. Usually what it is, it's a little bit of a rim, but when it prints, I didn't take the rim off completely. So it's just a matter of going over it like this, taking the ridge off. There you go. And that takes the ridge off. Here's the fun part. We got a stick. These two pieces together. So I do the old, like I always say. Actually, it's probably easier for the put the tail. I'll move up and see what's the easiest way to do this. And the glasses on, I don't know where I am. And I'm going to put this test fit. Now, because this is round, I've got to make sure I line up the scales. So I think I'm pretty close. Now, you can mark it with a pen, pencil, whatever works for you. Whoa, that's a lot of glue. Kind of squished it. It broke through finally. So I want to, this gets easy to clean off, so I'm going to scrape this to the center. Or I'm going to have it squirting out all over the place. More than likely on me. Put my keyboard in. Okay, so this is going to be put on like that. And that is sticky. Get it as accurate as I can without sticking to it. Okay. Now how's that side? There we go. Okay, now without sudden movements, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna get all around it as much as I can. That should do the trick. Now hopefully on your side. It worked out good. Not bad. Oops, I'm not breaking the tail off if I'm not. But I gotta put some pressure on. So I can oh, there we go. Okay. That didn't work out so good. Okay. There it is. Put that up so I can see what I'm doing. There you go. Now there's your guard pike. Well, you're, it's an alligator gar, but it's from the pike family as far as I know. Freshwater. Now, they have uh, other gars that uh, um, they have the, the longer nose. It's, I don't know if they call them a needle nose. I'm not positive if somebody knows. Uh, uh, I've I would think, hey, it'd be a great name, Needle Nose Gar. But he's a long nose gar, and his nose comes out. And other than catching them 
uh, they don't like to open their mouth that that uh, that much when they have your net. So, but this guy here, he can grow to a monster sizes. I only made them smaller because when they have a twist like this, now if you've seen the the one I made of the uh, of the uh, the giant uh, catfish, the the whales catfish, there or the wells catfish, sorry. He's got a curve in his tail where it comes right up and over. And the bigger you make it, you're talking a circumference like that. That fish is covering big area. So I thought I'd make this guy a little, little smaller so that he can go on a nice piece of driftwood with a few different other fish and make a diorama with him. But actually, you can see the seams where I, where I glued it together, but it's actually not bad. So the next step will be to do some filling a little bit of putty see i could burn that in and then sand it down but i kind of like the i, I want to keep it as smooth as possible other than take the shine out of it to actually paint it so same with down in the mouth he's got the, quite the tongue and so and then the eyes i'll be doing the eyes and squashing those down i'll have to pick out some nice eyes well, i'll probably end up having to make some eyes i don't think i have any eyes to fit them so i'll make some glass eyes which i do have a video too it's one of my first videos it's a little dark uh lighting wise but it, it shows you how to make the eyes so you may want to check that out it's it's quite interesting so but like i said my first video we're ready to rock and roll put some eyeballs in there's really some epoxy Enough for both sides. Send a few videos like this. And I don't know if you've checked out my videos, some of them, but here is uh, the glass eyes that I make myself. So this one has a line running through it. So because when I do the camouflage kind of, he's going to be a really neat uh, kind of a camo color. And uh, this will be a line, the line will run through and then be airbrushed in to match it. So, should look really good. When we do our two part epoxy, the A and B, one's the hardener, one's the rosin. Just mix them together. A bit of a smell to it. Nothing that's gonna, you know, well, you could use a respirator if you like, but it's not, it's not a smell like that that it's gonna put you in jeopardy. So then we're gonna roll that up so we don't, oh, we, bit of it there. Enough that we have enough for both sides. And we'll take the eye. Now we gotta make sure we put the eye in the exact spot that we want it. Because it's gotta run back sideways. There we go. Now I wanna just take a peek at that from a different angle. Like it really nice. Okay. Before we get oh, too carried away, we're going to flip it around and we're going to do the other one. This one should be fine. It shouldn't go anywhere. That's why I use this. It's more like a it's a more like a paste epoxy. It's got a good hang time kind of idea. Well, I don't know if you call it a hang time, but... It... Oh, that's great. I just dropped the eyeball on the floor. And we got 
pick it up. Okay. That puts us behind the eight ball. Okay. Good thing we're using that stiffer epoxy. Gives us more time. Plus it doesn't drip. And we're gonna put that in its place. Then we're gonna line them so they look good together. So we kind of put them so that we can see them there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, so we got some epoxy left, so we're going to put some on the top to cover the glass. And we usually go over it with some around the eye later when it, after it sets up with some spot putty. Do a nice little even it out. This will do a good job to put the eyeball in. And, and anything you get on the glass that you don't want on the glass will come off. So that's good to go. Alrighty. So, and we'll fix this one up so that, there we go. There we go. So we have the eye in, eyes in, and that's how it looks in our gar pike. Now, if we go up to this one here, you can actually, and very soon I'm going to have an arm on that other camera so we can come closer. I just ordered one. So that'll be good. And back down. Look at the teeth on this monster. That's awesome. That is awesome. So we're good to go. And then we'll do some filling. Clean it up. And then I think the next thing will be is to figure out how we're going to hang it. What are we going to do with it uh, when, when we figure out... Uh, what kind of a display it'll be on. And that'll be, as soon as I figure that out, after that, that's that's when I actually paint it. Because once I figure out how it's gonna be displayed. So, we're good to go. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.